Hello everybody! It's great you joined watching second part of Methods of Science video. In the first part we started with deductive and inductive logic, probability and statistics, importance of parsimony and efficiency. Let's continue with other important methods and instruments of science. And the next topic is PEL – model of full disclosure. It's very important scientific model for building good way of logical reasoning. A weakness of human thinking and communicating allows implicit assumptions during discussions. For example, you can make assumption that your mobile phone is broken based on no possibility to receive incoming calls. But what if you used airplane mode, which is equivalent of mobile phone being switched off from a mobile network? Or what if you just moved out of the mobile network coverage? That consequently may bring wrong understanding. Science needs more precise language to have less room for interpretation. And that can be achieved by PEL – model of full disclosure. The main idea is to announce explicitly all argument details, including all premises. The basic model of scientific method named by acronym PEL. The idea is to combine presuppositions, evidence and logic to support scientific conclusion. Let's have an example. Do you remember from previous videos through Science Lenses an example when my friend tells me I see you standing on the stage and playing the violin. Let's check what premise and conclusion we may have for this phrase. Premise – My friend sees me on a stage. Conclusion – I'm on a stage. From common sense, conclusion is certain to be true and the whole argument, consistent with premise and conclusion, is strong, isn't it? In fact, it is not. Surprised? Scientifically, argument is incomplete and defective. Let's work with it. Actually, another required premise needs to be added, which is seeing implies existence, specifically regarding seeing me and seeing a stage. This is simply the presupposition that seeing is believing, which we also discussed in the previous videos through science lenses. With the addition of the second premise, the argument now looks this way. My friend sees me on a stage. Seeing implies existence. Therefore, I'm on a stage. Just FYI, this last sentence in the expanded argument is actually proper rule of logic. This is much better and follows valid argument form. By the way, our particular deductive rule of logic to achieve conclusion has its specific name – modus ponens. Of course, there are lots of other valid argument forms for other situations, but we don't plan to discuss them now. What is important that to achieve full disclosure, the logic used within our argument must itself be disclosed and another additional premise, in our case stating that modus ponens is a correct rule for deduction. This is to be our fourth statement within argument. And finally, to avoid extra thinking, we should narrow down scope of discussion only to relevant things. We need to explicitly mention archive, which is a philosophical term about person's beliefs that are irrelevant to a particular given argument. For example, if we talk about me on a stage, my beliefs about Circus du Soleil on a stage and tickets price for their show, for example, and lots of other things, they can be sent to archive. How many times I was distracted at my work from the main topic of discussion with irrelevant data and spent extra time with unnecessary data? Life would be much easier if I would know archive part of full disclosure earlier in my life and would keep it in my mind during those on-the-job discussions to narrow down discussion and focus only on a main topic. Let's wrap up and represent argument with full disclosure now. A little bit reshuffled. Premise number one. Presupposition. Seeing implies existence. Premise number two. Evidence. My friend sees me on a stage. Premise number three. Logic. Modus ponens is a correct rule for deduction. Premise number four. Archive. The archive dismissed only irrelevant beliefs. Conclusion. I'm on a stage. 
Remember, presuppositions are beliefs that are necessary for considered hypotheses to be meaningful and true. We discussed presuppositions in the previous video, such as physical world exists and that our sense perceptions are generally reliable. Evidence is data which must be meaningful in view of available presuppositions and it must be relevant to hypotheses under consideration. Logic combines the presupposition and evidence, our premises, using valid reasoning to reach a conclusion. Science uses deductive and inductive logic, which we discuss at the first part of this video. Irrelevant material must be ignored to avoid infinite and impossible mental processing. Archive is used for this goal. It has no active role and hence it's not indicated in the acronym for the PEL model. That's it for PEL model of full disclosure as an important model for building good way of logical reasoning in science. Actually, you can use it every day as well, at home, at work, etc. For having fun, think about hidden premises during making yours or checking someone else's argument and logical conclusions for the next few days. You will discover a lot. Before discussing next topic, peer review process, which is another very important instrument of science, I'd like to mention ways of spreading popularization of science, as well as scientific institutions governing organizations which play significant role in the moving science forward. And let's talk briefly about most important historical turns which helped to build science in its current form. While you are watching this video, you kind of participating in automating and scaling up knowledge sharing. I'm not discussing this topic face to face, I recorded it once and thousands of people can watch it now onwards. Isn't it a good example of scaling up? Returning to our topic, could you remember important facts in history helping to populate science? What allowed to scale and speed up human knowledge sharing with keeping science in focus? Language is unique technique to share information. People on Earth started speaking tens of thousands of years ago, and I would like to put language as a historical starting point for our current topic. Then written ways of sharing information came few thousand years ago. Sumerian clay tablets, Egyptian papyruses, and eventually handwritten books of different kinds. Books written just once can be used multiple times by multiple people later. So books allowed to automate and scale up process of sharing information. Johann Gutenberg invented print and press in 15th century, which brought 20-fold increase in productivity and mass book production. Journalism began in the 17th century. It improves communication and played a great role for science popularization. There were Journal des Scavans, founded in January 1665 in France, and the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society, founded in England three months later, not to mention the first true encyclopedias, John Harris's Lexicon Technicum, or Universal English Dictionary of Art and Science, in 1704, and Ephraim Chambers's Cyclopedia of Universal Dictionary of Arts and Sciences, in 1728. Journalism brought new way of communication in scientific world, it started being possible to public scientific researches and hypotheses, to receive confirmation or disapproval for those works from other scientists. There are a lot of journals per each subject, so professionals have access for own publications, for making comments, or just read historical or latest research news. Let's temporarily move forward in time. Electric communications having origins in the second half of 19th century started with telephone, then brought television and internet the very next century. So now we can enjoy next level of scaling up and popularization of science. Watching TED Talks and other scientific videos became so widely spread over the world. So you can see how communication channels expanded over the history. What are the other effective way of sharing knowledge and making research with focus on science? Now let's move back in time. Answers started coming closer to 18th century. Royal Institution in London, founded in 1799 by Benjamin Thompson, became soon a research center. 
It was also a place where popular scientific lectures were delivered to different audiences. There were other organizations before, but they had no open public function. For example, the Literary and Philosophical Society of Manchester, founded in 1781, was a club for men interested generally in science and learning. Let's talk about educational organizations offered programs to public. In 1799, the Berlin Bau Academic was founded. It was followed by the Prague Polytechnic in 1805 and the Vienna Polytechnic in 1815. But the most remarkable educational foundation was Wilhelm von Humboldt's University of Berlin, established in 1810. During the Second Industrial Revolution, the high-tech social institution has been assembled in Germany by state technical colleges or polytechnics, supplemented with von Humboldt's universities. They became universities of technology. And in 1899, eight largest those universities of technology started awarding degrees. The German PhD degree system was adopted by American universities soon after that, and also appeared in other countries. There are a lot of other scientific organizations nowadays engaged in scientific research, classification of scientific subjects, distribution of scientific knowledge. They could be classified different ways, by country, by scientific subject, etc. They may have different forms like scientific boards, societies, academies of science, think tanks, etc. Having just discussed ways of communicating, we need to realize that modern scientific society has lots of platforms, channels to bring exceptional, multiple times verified knowledge. And one of the important methods to put scientific information on a high trustworthy level is peer review process. In general, scientists within similar areas of study have possibility to ask, receive and provide feedback or additional research on the topic. We need to understand that scientific goal is not always to confirm someone's hypothesis, but also to disprove it if applicable. It's additional way of implementing checks and balances within the scientific system. And by the way, history knows examples of changing scientific views and paradigms because of such peer reviews. Let's combine all discussed terms from current and previous videos through science lenses and methods of science into one diagram with simplified general scientific method. What is the main source of data for science? Of course, nature. The main goal of science is to form and systematize knowledge about reality, about nature around us. Remember about terms learned from previous video about truth, objectivity and realism. That's what nature has and science claims to collect it in form of scientific knowledge. Imagine you are a young scientist. At the beginning of coming up with new hypotheses and theories, you need to gather some initial data for your particular research. It might be your own observations to collect data and or previously collected by you or anyone else. Luckily, books and other sources may help. In case of collecting own data, remember to keep in mind scientific presuppositions that world exists and our senses of perceptions and instruments are generally reliable. Of course, you cannot avoid potential noise coming with data. We discussed briefly data distortion in the part 1 of the Methods of Science video. And remember to collect data rationally, since science claims rationalism for its knowledge. We talk about rationality in the Through Science Lenses video. Once data is collected, it comes a time for inductive logic. You need to recognize patterns and make generalizations. This is where analytical part starts. Results of induction should bring formulating hypotheses or models for your research. Remember Karl Popper's falsifiability principle from Through Science Lenses video. We need to verify our hypothesis and models. To prove or disprove, we need to come with some testable predictions, follow up with actual designed reproducible experiments to be conducted. Remember that input data will be your test plan along with data collecting from nature with its possible noise. Evidence 
is very important for science, as discussed in previous videos. Test results may heavily use statistics and probability. And then results come to the next analytical step. By critical analysis and using deductive logic, we need to understand test results' relevance with preliminary hypothesis. Remember that both deduction and previously mentioned induction steps should follow PEL model of full disclosure. Once data analyzed, hypothesis may be altered or even rejected. There might be a need for several rounds of collecting results of reproducible experiments and analysis steps. Test results on the next steps may adjust predictions or may even completely contradict. Consequently, that affects hypotheses and models, which can be altered or even rejected. If no full rejection happened, eventually, after one or several rounds, test results might fully support your initial or altered hypothesis. If you reach this step, you are lucky to move to design stage to form your initial theory. Remember that science is public and shared, it's a liberal art and it has a lot of ways to spread information within as well as outside scientific world. That's where publishing comes. Please note that we all human and we still may not collect enough evidence. Data might be too noisy, we may make human logical mistakes, remember biases discussed in previous videos, and so on. Therefore, you need to be ready that your theory may be fairly criticized. Remember, Data underdetermine theory, no matter how well one theory explains a set of observations. It is possible that another theory may fit just as well or better, and all theory might be even rejected. To verify your theory, it's better to wait for peer review process. So another round or even several rounds of steps just discussed will be involved to be made by your peer reviewers. Your theory can be confirmed altered or maybe even rejected by other scientists. We just fully finished discussing terms from Through Science Lenses 2 videos and Scientific Instruments in Methods of Science 2 videos. We discussed science borders like no theology and no metaphysics. Within that borders, scientific methods claim to be very effective to collect and rationally systematized objective truth about reality. Before finishing this video, we need to mention that scientific approach is not the only approach of forming human knowledge. Some of the existing non-scientific ways of gaining knowledge are trivial or trivially practical, collects knowledge from early stages of human history, delivers simple data about surrounding nature, which includes common sense survival basics, science, recipes, personal experience and traditions and it serves as basic orientation in surrounding nature and as a basis for usual everyday behavior. Artistic, which tries to reflect reality through signs, symbols and artistic images. Mythological, considered to be peculiar for historically primitive human cultures, tries to explain reality with the help of personified supernatural beings, legendary heroes theological and some other ways of gaining knowledge. They are not considered to be used in science for different reasons, for example due to no possibility to systematize or to prove or to filter by scientific criteria such as falsifiability or just because of scientific borders historically set. We are not opposing methods of collecting information, but to me scientific way looks highly reliably trustworthy due to discussed terms models and scientific method. As a result, Motivation How Portal plans to provide systematized motivational videos for scientific branches and subjects as its biggest part of Portal's information without focusing on non-scientific items. Methods of science videos are coming to an end. The next few videos will be about techniques and technology. Hope you will watch and enjoy them as well. We will cover a few important things reveal why they are so important for human in the whole history and especially modern days. And just FYI, there is a plan to cover techniques and technologies by Motivation How Portal as well. See you!